talk about all this if, if we can't um, have an understanding of the blue economy first. So what we mean by blue economy here at Alta Sea is the sustainable, keyword there, sustainable use of ocean resources with an eye towards promoting well-being, good livelihoods, good jobs, and protecting the, the ocean while we're at it. So this is really not business as usual. When we think of economic development, we are concerned about the environment and with the work we do here, and we are concerned about the people that are impacted by the economic development that we support. We think the blue economy represents an extraordinary opportunity for sustainable development that can lead to shared benefits and uplifted communities. In the face of climate change, we're seeing a, a changing job landscape. Um, most jobs are becoming climate jobs, certain industries are going away, new industries are growing. So many climate solutions are going to come from the ocean. I'll speak to this a little bit later in my talk. And we really need to focus on building the regional capacity for these developing new industries in the blue economy. And that starts with preparing the workforce for those industries. So, enter Altisea. As you uh, know and has been mentioned, Altisea is in the process of renovating these century-old warehouses to create a modern maker space for the blue economy. We aim to be a blue economy innovation hub that is unparalleled. We want to see the blue economy thrive here in Southern California. This region is so well positioned with the number of climate-focused businesses and nonprofits and institutions of higher learning, we think we really have what it takes in this region to make this dream of a thriving global economy in our community a reality. The long and short of Altisea's mission is that we are dedicated to realizing a more sustainable, equitable, and just world. And we see this happening through the coordinated, thoughtful development of the blue economy across three programmatic areas that we support, and that is the education, the business, and the research of the ocean economy. We help develop curriculum, we provide tours, we engage in public advocacy, we provide business assistance, entrepreneurship assistance, space. We've collected this extraordinary blue economy resources hub and expertise that we hope will be useful to all the colleges participating in the BCAP program. So between our um, resources here, our partners, our staff, our consultants, we're hopeful that we can be helpful in programming guidance and providing subject matter expertise providing facilities for students, including flexible lab space. You can imagine it. I know you don't see it here today, but in the coming months, there will be flexible lab space here, right on the ocean. And then we also have already, um, in the past, and, and continue to do so in the future, uh, help connect students to internship opportunities in the global economy, again, with many of our, our own business partners that, again, imagine it, we'll be working out of this space uh, very soon. So our work across education, research, and business focuses on three particular industry verticals under the blue economy. The first is regenerative ocean farming. So these are practices that are going to provide sustainable food, sustainable fuel, and industrial products while restoring ocean health. So aquaculture historically probably hasn't had the best reputation, and we've all seen the videos and, and documentaries on this, but there are ways of, of sustainably growing fish, sea animals, um, crops in the ocean that can actually restore ocean health and again, provide the sustainable food and fuel we need for the future. That is a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> words there, a little bit of alliteration. Say that three times fast. So again, the, one of the focus clusters we um, support here is regenerative ocean farming. The second is marine renewable energy. So we've seen the shift towards solar and wind. These are both intermittent sources of clean energy. Wave energy exists 24-7, 365, it's very predictable and consistent, and we're hopeful that um, the adoption of this industry in the state of California in particular, but of course beyond, will be a complement to wind and solar, and also provides a great opportunity for um, more offshore um, infrastructure to be built that can be built in a way that is sustainable and actually provides regenerative benefits to the ocean. So the first two clusters there, we have regenerative ocean farming, marine renewable energy, and then the third is blue tech. As it was mentioned, I believe, earlier today, we know so little about our ocean. I believe less than 10% of oceans have been explored. And so there is new technology coming online to help us sense and explore what's going on in our oceans, which cover, again, 70% of the planet. So we should probably uh, get on that, understanding what's going on in our oceans and our relationship with the oceans and how we can better um, engage and use our ocean resources. So again, whether it's really providing space, engaging in public advocacy or connecting to policymakers, 
Pultisi has developed a strong expertise and network across these three um, focus clusters, and we're hopeful that we can be helpful to colleges in the BCAP programming, um, a, particularly with a focus on these cluster areas. We already partner with Santa Monica College with respect to their aquaculture work, with Harbor College with respect to their hydrogen programming, and we've also partnered with West LA College um, to help place students in um, internship and job opportunities in the blue economy. So we certainly look forward to developing more partnerships across all of these focus areas with colleges in the region. I really want to underscore Altice's commitment to workforce development as integral to our work. I believe this is a big piece of sustainable economic development, is thoughtful workforce development. We've actually invested in our own workforce development programming called our Altice Ocean Pathways Program. And we start, uh, we start in the eye. We, we developed programming for K-12 students to engage in the ocean early in life. And um, sometimes we hear students when they come to Alta Sea, it's one of their first times that they've actually they've been right up on the ocean and seen it up close. And our hope is, of course, by instilling these, this ocean-loving and, and ocean awareness in students early, they will go on to pursue careers in the blue economy and potentially enroll in a BCAP program. We want to see a thriving blue economy in this region. Workforce development is key to that, not just to fill vital climate jobs, but also to grow the next crop of climate, climate leaders for our community, and I cannot underscore that enough. We need leaders to, to start the work and continue the work so that we can um, save our oceans, not just for ourselves, but for future generations. So I want to say thank you on behalf of all to see for being here today. I have no doubt that some of the partnerships that take seat today will play a role in creating a more sustainable, equitable, and blue future for us all. Thank you. Before I head off the stage, I want to introduce the head of LARC, um, Dr. Narene Marcadon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Narina McKeegan. I'm the Chair, Assistant Vice President of the Los Angeles Regional Consortium. I would like to take this opportunity to just share briefly a little bit about LARC. LARC is a consortium of the LA-19 Community Colleges working collectively to deliver on a promise that California Community Colleges are accessible and affordable to all who seek and to realize a better future. We collaborate with four-year universities, K-12 partners, high-road employers, with high-growth and in-demand industries to align curriculum and workforce training programs, creating seamless pathways for college and career readiness. Our mission is to bridge the gap between LA's workforce and employers fueling our cutting-edge economy. Our objective is to address the skills gap by increasing accessibility of well-trained, skilled workforce in in-demand industries. And this will also help to increase economic and social mobility for our LA County residents and students. I am deeply grateful to be able to collaborate with visionary and innovative leaders across our 19 community colleges, our 19 CEOs and presidents, and our esteemed LACCD chancellor, as well as our dedicated workforce teams. Their innovative, student-centered approach has been pivotal in funding this Blue Economy and Climate Actions Pathway Regional Project with strong work funds from the Chancellor's Office. As the lead college, SMC is spearheading these collective efforts and we are extremely grateful for their expertise and leadership. The BCAP project is designed to address the emerging employment demands and ocean-related labor markets while also aligning with climate action and environmental justice priorities. I want to thank our, nine, our 13 colleges who are actively engaged in this project, including East LA College, El Camino College, Long Beach City College, LA Harbor, LA Mission, LA Pierce, LA Valley, Mount Sac, Pasadena, Rio Hondo, Santa Monica, and West LA College. Now, it is my distinct honor to in introduce Stephen Chung, President and CEO of the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation and World Trade Center Los Angeles, who will provide an overview of the blue economy.
Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Dr. McKeegan, for the introduction. Um, two, two things before I start. One, I have a tendency of going over, so I'm going to time myself. And second, I apologize. I overestimated my eyesight, so hopefully I can see my notes. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the ocean economy and why it's so important to this entire region and why the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation has focused um, on the ocean economy as one of the key sectors that this region should invest in. I'm going to go over a couple of items in terms of what we do with LADC and why we're focusing on this. Uh, the economic impact for not only the local economy, but overall to the entire globe as well. And then looking at the sectors in terms of the job opportunities that are available, so hopefully we can start thinking through what skill sets are necessary as well, and some recommendations in terms of what we can do. Actually, before we start, I just want to also acknowledge uh, um, some of the things that have been said uh, by previous speakers. The importance of why uh, we're here, but also where we are today. Um, for those of you who know me, some of you know that I actually used to work at the Port of Los Angeles, so this is in my backyard. So whenever I'm driving down the one ten coming back, memories start flood flooding back. And uh, it was good memories, because to see what happened to this space, and under the leadership of Terry Tamman and Jenny Caruso, to have the vision uh, years ago to turn this into a space where we can all gather and start transforming this entire region, that didn't happen overnight, and that didn't happen without leadership and vision. So Jenny and Terry, thank you so much for all that you've done to bring us all here. But that type of work doesn't happen without years and years of hard work. So thank you for that, thank you. And uh, I always like stories. So one of the stories is actually before uh, uh, when I was working here, um, this space used to be just basically holdover space because most of the, the, the um, Cargo containers are moved in the cargo containers, right? So where you're at right now, sometimes it's overflow for bananas are coming through. So there's a situation where, I don't know whether you know about infestation of spiders and bananas. They have to fumigate, but sometimes you have millions of little spiders kind of crawling out your, 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 uh, your bananas. That was my memory that's here. And to turn it into this amazing space, a future is a completely different way of doing things. So again, another great thing that's happening because of the, the work that we're doing here. Now let's talk a little bit about why the, um, what we do with the LADC and why we decided to focus on this. LADC is a nonprofit organization here in Los Angeles County, really supporting the growth of industries throughout this entire region. And how we do it is because we want to change, we want to make sure that we're investing in the future economy and the industries that are going to pay off for this entire region. And what we do is we have a five-pillar approach. We have our economic development and also our research center, where we start identifying uh, and using data and facts to start identifying what are the growth sectors, what uh, industries will actually produce a lot of jobs for us and a lot of good paying jobs for us. And so our research is really going to be driving where we're going to go. And based on our data information, we know, and as you're going to see the, the, with the presentation, why we decided to focus on the ocean economy. Second is once you have the research that we need to build an industry cluster. How do we bring in public, private, nonprofit, academic, not, uh, labor, uh, environmental, uh, stakeholder groups combined together to help us really bring this entire region together? It's not easy. LA is so big with 10 million people with 88 different cities over 100 incorporated regions. How do we make sure that we're able to get everybody together to focus on sectors that are important to us and start telling that narrative? And today, you guys are all here and you guys will be ambassadors telling that story in the future as well. That, uh, Industry cluster work is our second pillar, but one of the things we hope to do is to bring in an industry uh, council. This council will help us develop an economic blueprint, step-by-step -step instruction of what we need to do to build this entire industry for the next five to 10 years. That blueprint will also lay out our next three pillar strategy. The third one is business assistance. How do we help businesses, large and small, especially since Los Angeles County, I don't know whether you know this, 94% of all LA County companies have less than 20 employees. I'm gonna let that sink in, 94%. That's a lot of small businesses. How do we make sure that they can be part of this entire ecosystem as we're growing? And so we need to help the large companies, small businesses like, especially for those in underserved communities that have never been given the chance to be incorporated and take advantage of this growing sector. Then we have uh, our next pillar, which is international. So many international companies, especially since we're at the Port of Los Angeles, are coming to Los Angeles and focusing on Los Angeles. This is a huge economic driver for us. The more these companies are able to come here, open up operations, and create local jobs for us, the 
better we are as a region. And finally, workforce development. And that's why it's so important. All of this is tied in together without a talented workforce and a talent pipeline that can feed into the industry growth. We would never be able to attract the international and domestic companies to open up here. So that's why the future is in your hands. So we need to make sure that we're working collectively so that we have the skill sets necessary to grow the sector together. Um, the blue economy, uh, Jaden was mentioning already, so I'm not going to repeat in terms of what the definition is, but we're excited that we're able to now really is getting this message out there. So again, as ambassadors of the blue economy, please start sharing this message and what the blue economy is and why it's so important to this region. Now, why it matters, a couple of things, economic driver. Um, when you look at the potential that's happening right now, uh, right now the blue economy is worth about $1.5 trillion per year globally. And it supports over 30 million jobs globally as well. Well, let's get some of those dollars and let's get some of those jobs here in the global region so that we can actually elevate our, our, our economy as well. The other thing is about sustainability and conservation. The blue economy is a sustainable development approach so that we can actually grow the sector, but do it sustainably and actually help address some of the environmental concerns. I don't know whether you know, but about 90% of the, the carbon emissions are actually absorbed by our ocean. So this is actually a, a huge potential for us to mitigate some of the challenges that we're facing globally as well. When it comes to food security, uh, oceans and coastal areas are critical for food security, so we need to make sure that as we're growing, we're actually addressing these issues together. And then um, I was talking about the climate change mitigation in terms of sustainability as well as tied hand in hand together. And then finally, equity. This is a huge opportunity for us to make sure that these jobs and these entrepreneurship opportunities are available and not only available, but actually are streamlined so that our most disinvested communities get a share of the growth. And this is not gonna happen without working together to make sure that we actually have a plan. And that's why having these conversations now allows us to basically come up with those plans. As mentioned before, $1.5 trillion. That's a lot of money as it's growing, and it's gonna to continue to grow. The world's gonna be looking towards uh, regions that have that leadership, and having this ecosystem here that's growing, we can get a share of that pie. We can actually grow that pie, and those jobs that are available to 30 million, let's start increasing it. And Los Angeles, with a population of 10 million people, we can do a lot more. As Jay's been mentioning before, there's a lot of synergy in terms of all, all the jobs out there. So I'm not gonna go through all the sectors, but you can see the potential that's there between the ocean economy, between the blue economy, and that crosses over with our green economy that's been really already robust here in Los Angeles. Um, many of you know over the, the past decade or two, um, the Los Angeles region has been leading uh, when it comes to environmental sustainability. Our policies are very assertive, and some people use that against us. I think we should own it. Yes, we have environmental, uh, environmentally strict policies, but that's helping us. Recently, I just came back from a trade mission to India. I was sharing with some of you, when we landed in, uh, in, in Delhi, my eyes started watering because the air pollution was so bad. And as we're talking to our friends over at Delhi and Mumbai about their air quality, they're, they're coming to us saying, Is, are you guys really the right folks to lecture us about this? And we're saying, we're not here to lecture you. Don't forget Los Angeles was a small capital of the United States back in the 60s and 70s. We didn't get to this point where we can have blue skies and sunshine overnight, and yet we still have a lot of work to do. It took a lot of effort and planning. That's why I was mentioning before, the vision needs to be there. The work needs to be there. So as we're looking at the blue economy and the green economy, the crossing over the OPA, and this is where we're at. We're at the center where the global economy is working towards us for that leadership and that guidance. Um, the sectors that are, are within each of the sectors, you can see there's a lot of potential when it comes to living resources, marine transportation, tourism and recreation that's here. Uh, at the same time with the, uh, with the green economy, as mentioning, globally we have a lot of potentials, but here in Los Angeles, because of the work that we've done through some of our partners, including the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator, the various city initiatives, we're really doing quite a lot. I also want to highlight that Altacy is at the center of that as well. Many of you already know that our federal government partners issuing billions of dollars towards sustainability. So some of those dollars are coming through the Infrastructure uh, um, Investment and Jobs Act and also the Inflation Reduction Act. And one of those uh, programs includes a hydrogen hub program. That California just recently received $1.2 billion in allocation for the Department of Energy. 
a big chunk of that will actually come here to the Port of Los Angeles, Port of Long Beach, to help us develop a uh, future in hydrogen. So all those opportunities are available through the blue, uh, sorry, through the green economy, but directly connected to the, uh, the blue economy as well. So you can see the green economy, and there's so many things that we do about energy, energy efficiency, waste management. As we're getting ready for that, there's so much more that we can do. Um, the other thing I want to highlight as well is when you're thinking about this region, it's not just at the Port of LA, Port of Long Beach, uh, but you're also looking at some of the sectors that are not directly related, but you can see how it could be. One of the things that I'm very excited about is in 2028, Los Angeles will be hosting the Olympic Games for the third, uh, the third time, Olympics and Paralympic Games. And this is going to be a huge opportunity for us to show the world what we can do. But before that, in 2026, we'll be hosting the FIFA World Cup. 2026, we'll also be hosting the NBA All-Star Game. 2027, we'll be hosting the Super Bowl. We'll be hosting the 2031 U.S. Open Championship, a candidate city for 2031 for U.S., sorry, the World Rugby Championship. U.S. Women Open is gonna come in 2032. It goes to 2039. We have games all the way across. But these are where the globe is going to come to us. And if we get our uh, green economy right, and we can tie it with the blue economy sector, we can showcase the power of Los Angeles and attract those international investors as well. The other thing is don't forget uh, about um, the, the maritime transport. We're at the Port of LA, Port of Long Beach. A lot of times over the, the last um, few years, especially during COVID, people across America also start realizing the importance of LA. You all saw the news report about this uh, vessels that were docked outside, the hundred vessels that are docked outside. With President Biden coming almost every week, come every month, uh, Secretary Buttigieg was here, uh, CNN, all the news media are saying, what are you guys doing in that LA? Why is it so congested? And we got all the negative press. I just want to say and challenge, where were the news reporters when we solved that issue when we had four ships left outside? Where's the thanks in terms of uh, LA being able to solve a global crisis? That's when the world starts understanding the importance of Los Angeles. Between the Port of LA and Port of Long Beach, those two ports alone, they control about 40% of all cargoes coming into the United States. That's why when there's a choke point here, it chokes the rest of the United States. At the Port of LA, Port of Long Beach, our work here touches every congressional district across all 50 states, including Alaska, right? <laughs> including Alaska and Hawaii. So we affect the entire nation. And that's the importance of why the blue economy is so important to us. And I was mentioning uh, Port of Long Beach, Port of LA, as we're looking at the market share, as we're looking at the jobs. The jobs we create is right 2.3 million jobs throughout the entire nation. And then as we're moving forward, you can see the numbers that are located uh, that's there. Uh, between the Port of LA and Port of Long Beach, we move about 18, 19 million TEUs. TEU stands for 20-foot equivalent units. These are the 20-foot boxes out there. Most of the boxes are about 40 um, uh, foot. If you have a chance, if you just ask you're driving around, take a look at those ships that are out there. Enormous ships. When I was working here, I used to do boat tours. And I'm always amazed because if you stand one of those ships upright, they're taller than the Eiffel Tower. That's the size of the ships that are coming through. That's what we do here. And those are the jobs that affect the rest of the, uh, of the nation as well. So with all that said, what do we do with this uh, huge potential that's located here? Uh, we need to make sure that our training and education programs are obviously aligned and make sure that we're able to get ready for the next generation. As the skill sets are going to change, every year we're seeing new technology, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's uh, a new, new sorts of ways of looking at the, the environment. Uh, we need to adjust and adapt, and that's why it's so important for our faculty and our educators and our presidents to work hand in hand to make sure that we're able to address the challenges in front of us. And we need to make sure that we have specific blue and green economy curriculum that are designed to support the growth of the sector so that we can utilize, and folks like us at LADC can utilize the curriculum and education to attract new companies that are coming in. When it comes to coastal uh, infrastructure investment, I already mentioned that some dollars are coming through, but please note that for every single dollar that the federal government allocate to the West Coast, about seven to nine dollars get allocated to the East Coast. We, are, we control 40% of the cargo, yet a lot of the tax dollars are going to bear. So we need to do more advocacy to make sure that we get our fair share so we're not subsidizing our competitors to basically compete with us for this. We need to make sure that we're growing the sector as well. And second, as we're moving forward, we're going to activate and we're going to mobilize all of you. We need to make sure that our state and federal government understands that when issues are coming to us, don't come to us for the 
problem come with a, with a solution as well. We have the solution, but you have to fund this. So we need to do more advocacy to get our fair share of the dollars that are coming through. Research and development, we need to do a lot more with um, federal agency like NOAA and university researchers. They see the, the future for research and development as a key potential. Altice plays a significant role here to basically be the incubation center and, the, and the, really the mind to really bring together these resources. So how do we work with our community colleges to make sure that we're able to start uh, getting our, our students, getting our workforce to be ready for the next generation of research and development? And finally, as I was mentioning with equity and inclusion, this becomes a huge opportunity um, as uh, LADC, we have a research arm, and we've been seeing that over the last decade or so, the income divide continues to grow within our region. The rich is getting richer, the poor is getting poorer, and yet our economy as a whole looks fantastic, right? When you look at the LA County economy, our economy is over $800 billion. If we were a country, LA County's uh, economy would be the 19th largest economy in the world. Fantastic, right? But we go outside, we walk out too far, we're also the number one homeless capital in the United States. We need to solve that issue. And part of the, uh, the problem and part of the solution is making sure that we're not just hoping for equity and inclusion, but we actually build pathways. And that's why, again, it's so important for you all to be here because you guys are actually creating a pathway for us to solve those issues. So with that, that's my time. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are all excited about the ocean economy. I want to especially thank the Los Angeles Region of Consortium, all the community colleges, uh, and especially uh, Trisha, thank you so much for your leadership and your trust in, in, in some of the, the research data that we have. Without champions like Trisha, we wouldn't be able to get, get to the finish line. So and this is not the finish line. This is only the, the leg one of many, many legs. So let's work together on this. Thank you so much. And now I have the distinct pleasure of uh, introducing Ashanti Blaze Hopkins, who will be from Santa Monica College, who will be talking more about an exciting program that will be launched. Thank you so much, Ashanti. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? So, um, my name is Ashanti Blaze Hopkins. I am the Interim Associate Dean at the Center for Meeting Design at Santa Monica College. And before that, I was a faculty member in the journalism program for eight years. And even before that, I was a television news anchor and reporter uh, for many, many, many years. And so, this is why this information is important. So, Dean Trisha Ramos, our fearless leader in workforce and economic development, introduced me to what the blue economy was in general. And I remember the phone call, because she said, do you know what a blue economy is? And I said, no. <laughs> and she said, okay, well listen, I need you to figure it out and I need a podcast. <laughs> and I said, okay, we'll figure this out, we'll do it. Um, and so, you know, we pulled together a team of faculty and even students to try and make this thing a reality. And, and if I could just share with you kind of her, her foresight here. As we were pitching this idea of the Blue Economy and Climate Action Pathways Project to the Los Angeles Regional Consortium of Community Colleges in LA County, the one question that we kept getting was, what is the Blue Economy? What are we signing up for? What is this? And so I think that underscored the importance of having a podcast that could be a piece that was instrumental in informing and educating not just potential students, but industry, legislators, members of the community, and other higher education institutions as to why this particular area was one, so important, and two, critical, because the community colleges had to be the ones to educate the workforce for all the jobs that we knew were gonna be coming online in the years to come that were connected to the blue economy. So that's what we did. So if you look on your screens right here on either side of me, what you'll see is the culmination of that idea and what we were able to produce that really has been in the works for about the last year. And what we call the podcast is Doing What Works, Exploring the Blue Economy. And so what we did is we created a pilot season and we were able to interview seven different experts within the blue economy field to talk about everything from what is the blue economy, to the kind of jobs that we're going to see, to the kind of efforts that are already underway. And so we're very excited to be able to launch this. And I will say, if everybody can pull out their little lanyard here, 
And if you turn it around to the back, what you'll see on there at the very bottom is a nice little website. <laughs> and if you go to that website, you're going to be able to listen to all the podcasts that we've been able to create over the last year. And so I want to kind of just give you a brief overview of how we were able to make this happen. Because I'm looking out into the audience and I'm seeing a lot of faculty and deans of other colleges across the county. And you all have the ability to be able to do this too. If you have a media production department, if you have a graphic design department, you have the ability to potentially make this happen just as we did. Because that's what we did. We pulled a, uh, one of our faculty from the aquaculture program, Dr. Nathan Churches. He helped us identify some of the folks that we could interview as part of this podcast series. We pulled one of our faculty from our podcasting program to be able to help us co-produce and also edit the podcast. We pulled me from the journalism program at the time to be the host and co-producer of the podcast. Right? And then plus we had the funding from the regional uh, uh, strong workforce funds to be able to make this happen financially. In addition to that, we have the benefit of having a bachelor's degree at the Center for Media and Design at Santa Monica College called Interaction Design. <laughs> and so one of the things that we did is we decided to make it a student project. So they took this podcast and really ideated what would a landing page look like? What a marketing strategy look like? What would tangential pop-up events look like? What would the branding look like for this? And so they spent 16 weeks really imagining what all of these things would look like and how to execute it and make it happen. And so that all happened last semester. We were able to hire one of those students this semester to try and make everything come into reality. And so that's kind of what you're seeing with this landing page right now. And so we're really excited about the opportunities that this can create. I will say all of you that are in this room right now, look at your emails, keep an eye out because I will probably be reaching out to you for season two, just letting you know. Um, and also, you know, we were supposed to interview the Chancellor Sonia Christian this morning as part of another episode of the podcast. And unfortunately she was sick and she couldn't be here today, but we will definitely be interviewing her for our season two. So. Uh, please keep an eye out for that as well. But we're so excited to share all of this with you. We're so excited to educate the community about the blue economy and everything that's coming up. It's an exciting time to be a part of this innovative project. So, again, back of your lanyards, please go to the website. Please let us know what you think. You know, uh, reach out to the folks that you have the email for the organizers of this event. We would love to hear your input about what you think about at least the pilot season of doing what works exploring the blue economy. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Matt Horton from the Milken Institute, who is also my hairstyle twin. So. <laughs> Now it's hot. <laughs> uh, I'm joined by my esteemed panel here. I'm Matt Horton. It's a real delight to be here. I'm also a trustee of, a proud trustee of all to see, like uh, Dr. Ramos, and a proud champion of, of, of the blue economy uh, 